Thank you very much to, uh, to everyone here for inviting me. Um, I know how Custer must have felt. Okay. <laughs> My name is Ben Navamsa. I am Bear Clan and uh, geek and meaning village leader from from Shingopavi, Shingopavi, Second Mesa, former chairman. One of the one of the good things about being former chairman is you can say whatever you want, right? Nobody really, did, you know, you don't have a council to go back to and say, you know, I'm sorry I said that. Uh, but what I'm going to say is, what a birthday present for Southern Arizona, isn't it? Senator Bill 2109, because that's where the water is going. Legally, the tribes can have a right to assert more claims than, than what, what they're, they're going to be getting under Senate Bill 2109. Is that what they said? The reason why that, that, that we can claim, but they're not giving us because we don't have the infrastructure. We, we, we deliver our water by, by horse and wagons, you know? So that's the reason why we're not going to give you as much water as you really need or entitled to. That's really his excuse to uh, rob, rob us of our legal claims our water. Um, how can you say blackmail? Some of us that were born and raised in the traditional way that are still practicing our, our ceremonies, that are still hold our water sacred, we understand what this will do to us, to destroy us. Those people that have, were not raised in the traditional way perhaps don't understand the magnitude of this bill because it, it allows, it requires us to waive our aboriginal rights, our winter's rights, forever. And I don't think that's good for either tribe. What are we gaining? I think some of these really fundamental questions we need to ask. What are we gaining? What are others gaining? And what are we giving up? And what is 2109? You know, you know the Colorado River starts from Colorado? And there's a green river that comes in here, and it goes all the way to, down to the Gulf of Mexico. That's what we're talking about. The um, courts have, have uh, divided the, 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 uh, the upper basin around Lee Ferry. That's the upper basin. And then down here is the lower basin. That's what we're talking about here. And then we are always coming down to narrow, narrow, uh, the, the, uh, you know, the narrowing the focus. Our reservation is here. We're all right here, right? But this is the, the, uh, the watershed of the Little Colorado. And it, notice that it goes into um, to, uh, New Mexico. And all the, all the tributaries going into the Little Colorado. And then on our reservation, we have, we have these washes. The, uh, the uh, Monkabee Wash, the Nebito, Uribe, Palaka, and then also there's a uh, uh, Jedito Wash. They all flow into the Colorado, the Little Colorado. And guess where that water is going? It's going down to, to the, the Colorado River, where there, then it then it's, uh, goes into the Central Arizona uh, uh, Project Delivery System, and they make money. Okay? And we, Hopi, cannot have access to the surface waters of Col the Little Colorado because it t doesn't touch our reservation. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I think this is where everybody needs to know where are we at in, in the terms of litigation. Back in, back in 85, uh, Phelps Dodge had filed a claim on, for the Little Colorado River. 3,500 other claimants have filed their respective claims. About 13,000 claims have been filed. Okay, so it's right here, the Superior Court in Apache County, St. John's. In the meantime, the, these claimants are now negotiating. They've been negotiating for years. And what came out just uh, recently is Senate Bill 2109 and a companion bill, the House Resolution 4067. We are here right now. We're deciding whether 2109 is good for us or whether it's bad for us. So if we said it was yes, then it becomes law. It becomes a decree. If we say no, then we can still have we have still have an option to go and litigate further. Because we have obviously, the claimants have obviously said, I have this much water right that I'm filing for. In in a case of Hopi, we were asserting we have different three different rights. We have our Aboriginal rights, we have our Spanish law rights under the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, and then we have our winter's rights. So we obviously have quantified it and, and submitted that 
to the, to the Superior Court. Okay? I'm sure other claimants have done that, including Navajo. So we may, not, we may go back, okay, is our claim solid? Is it on solid footing? And what are we getting in return that's better? So we need to go back and evaluate what we have claimed against what's being proposed to us. Okay? So, so as we go through this, through this process of, of discussing and, and seeing how, whether or not it's good for us, we need to go back and evaluate something, whether we should get rid of this and go straight to litigation or come back with something else, maybe some, some other form of agreement. But I'm going to tell you, without hesitation, Senate Bill 2109 is not good. It's not good for Hopi. And I'll tell you why. Just, uh, just really quickly, you know, I think most of you know where, where this came about. There's actually two general stream adjudications in Arizona. If you take a look at the Mogollon Rim, that's pretty much divides the, the state of Arizona. Anything above that is the, the, uh, the Little Colorado. Anything below, below that is the Gila. There's been uh, negotiations for, going on for a long time, and we're talking, talking about the water, the river system. It, it, can, it, it involves all the reservoirs, all the tributaries, and all the, the underground water. Okay. And this is, this, is the, this is the lawsuit that was filed in, in St. John's. Only Zuni so far has, has settled their LCR negotiation water rights. So who is affected by this? If, if the tribes, if 2109 is settled, then all these people will be uh, relieved of their, of the, uh, under this case because they are the defendants in this case. The uh, state of Arizona, Nevada, Southern Nevada, um, uh, Central Arizona Water Conservation District, you can see that, okay, it's all River Water uh, Users Association. These are the people that are gonna be relieved of this lawsuit. And then, who are, who are at the table? Who are negotiating these rights? There's about 33, 35 of them. And these are the, these are the parties that are involved. Hope Tribe, Navajo Nation, State of Arizona, United States, Silver Project, the uh, towns and cities along the Little Colorado, Land Department, Department of Transportation, Game and Fish, APS, wait. And then, continue on, all the, all the little, little entities in, in the White Mountains, Cholo, Woodland Irrigation District, Silver Creek, and so on. These are the people that are, have, have something to gain from the settlement of this bill. Since, the, since 1978 through 2007, there have been several water rights settlements um, um, made uh, in Arizona. Alchian Indian Community in 1978, Tohono Odom in 82, Salt River, Maricopa in 88, Fort McDowell, Yellow Pie Prescott, and Gila River, Tohono Odom in 2004, and White Mountain just, just recently. Tohono Odom, Gila River, that was the, the biggest Indian Water Settlement Act ever. And I have my own opinion about that, and that is because they are adjacent to the metropolitan areas in, in Phoenix. Because, the, because now they, they got the, a huge water rights claim. They're able to then lease that water, sell that water, market and water banking. Okay? They're able to do that because now they have, they're right in the middle of the metropolitan area. They can, they can move that water down to Tucson for irrigation purposes. So on. But we can't with this settlement. At some point, tribes need to be settling their, their, their water rights claims because they, they do benefit from it in, in the form of domestic uses and, and municipal uses, industrial uses, like for homes and so on, okay? They also do some economic development with that, maybe some industrial park might be able to use some of that, some of that water, but they also be, are, are able to do water banking, water marketing, water leasing, and water exchanges. But guess what? We can't move our water off the reservation. We can't lease off reservation. Well, first of all, the agreement, as far as Hopi concerned, our water is not quantified through this, this, this 2109. Instead, we get a municipal water supply into our villages, and not all villages get the water either. So the question is going to be, where is this water going to be coming from? 
Is it going to be coming from the Anna Aquifer? Or is it going to come from the Coconino Aquifer? That's what we need to find out. And what are the impacts going to be? Remember the original plan? Go ahead. Remember the original plan? The, the water was supposed to come from, from Page, the surface water from the, the lower basin, Colorado. It was supposed to come through Page, through um, um, Tuba City on and onto Cameron. And then from Tuba City, it was supposed to go eastward to the villages. That's wet water from the, from, from the lower basin. So Hopi gets the, a groundwater delivery system, no surface water, but groundwater from either the, the Navajo Aquifer or the Cosmonino. So, so we're not getting any surface water from the, from the lower basin. Remember I said that, that water is going down to central Arizona, southern Arizona? None of their reservations hit the river. The Colorado River does not hit their reservation, right? Because when, how you gain a water right is, is whether your, your people have been in that area and were using that water before, okay? None of those, none of those tribes, their reservations hit that area, okay? But how did they get a huge quantity of water, of white water? Think about, think about back in the 50s and the 60s, way back then, okay, and, and how everything came about with the, the, uh, the advent of the coal mining, be by the coal, okay, and then how Navajo gave up some land and so on to have the Navajo generating station there on the reservation, okay. They want that, they want two elements, two of our natural elements, two natural elements, water and coal. Why? because they want to make, produce cheap electricity to deliver, to provide the, uh, electricity to, to central and southern Arizona and be able to, to move that water from the Colorado, okay, at our expense. Take a look at, it's just, it's, it's, it's all planned out way back, way back when. And, and in a Hopi way, we say, Ding la beota. This is the way they had planned it out, okay? 2109 is just another piece of this. So what is at stake? Loss of our Aboriginal and Federal Reserve rights, okay? We're supposed to waive our Federal, uh, because we have migrated, our people have migrated to this area from a long time ago. Attorneys like to say, since time immemorial. And those are rights we give up. And once we give it up, we don't come back for more. We, we can't say, hey, by the way, oops, we forgot one thing. And, then, and they'll say, no, oops, too late. You waived your rights to additional water. Okay. So then the other thing is we cannot go back and, and sue them for future damage or in, a, in the future for past damages. They've damaged the aquifer. We have contamination. The holding, the impoundments and so on, you see up there. The river that runs through Lower Munkabee is not flowing anymore. Okay, and you can go on and on and on, but we cannot go back and hold them uh, responsible and liable for these damages because we will have waved them away. So, we also remember the, the suit that Hopi put in and perhaps Navajo put into the Superior Court? We'll say, we'll just pull that out, we'll withdraw that, because now we have settled for a ground, uh, groundwater municipal system. All that claim that we have filed in, about 50,000 acre feet, feet uh, something like that, I think is what we claim for, all, all that we, we wave away for the groundwater municipal water system. Okay. So right now we do have some federal protection, but when the when 2109 becomes law, then we go, we're now subjected to the state process. And we have to go to the state adjudication court. If we buy, if we just get again gain additional lands and so on, then we have to go through that state process. We are we are uh, organized a lot differently at Hopi. Our villages have the Aboriginal powers because they're more they're superior to those of the Tribal Council. What the current council has done, and the water and energy team, is they have infringed on our village property rights, our water rights, without our concurrence, our lands, and so on. Where's that water delivery system going to go? What, whose lands are they going to go on? 
It's the villages. We're also going to require, we have a few allotments at, at Tuba City, at Muntabi, infringing on their individual lands and water rights as well. Without even telling them what's, what's in 2109, without getting their concurrence. Okay? So, so that, what, that question is, is, is kind of a legal question. It goes back to our constitution. It goes back to how Hopi is organized. So there, there are only four villages right now. There are only four villages that are represented on our, on our council. We have 12 traditional villages. The traditional villages are not represented. So our question at Hopi is, can only the four representatives waive our aboriginal, our ancestral, our, our federal reserve water rights, our Spanish rights? So the Senate, the, the uh, Kyle letter here, February 17th, I believe, it basically says that somebody somewhere had agreed to this, and what he, what he filed, 21, 2109, is embodied in their agreement. 2109 represents what they had agreed to in, in what they called a conceptual agreement. Without people's concerns, without even informing them, the people. The train has already left the station. Senate Bill 2109 has been introduced. The House, the, the uh, companion bill, the House Resolution 40. 67, yes, has been, has been already introduced, so it's moving. And at some, some point, they'll have hearings and so on. At some point, they'll have a vote on it, and the president will sign it, and it'll become law. So we have to be following that process very closely. Today is a deadline for, for filing any uh, comments on that, on that um, on 2109. So, File that today before you go home. Okay, it's something in. Okay. What is in the law prevails. Okay, what is, whatever is going to be coming out in 2109 is, is going to become federal law. Okay, never mind what's in the, all the other, you know, secondary documents and so on. What's in the law will prevail. Okay, so what they're negotiating, all that might be well and good, but when the law is, becomes final, that's going to be the one that's going to hold water. No pun in words. We still have some time. If the agreement is not signed by either Hobie or by, or by Navajo, it's dead. If, it, if the governor doesn't sign it, if the 19 other parties don't sign it, then that's the end. Of course, it has the 2022 deadline as well. Okay? So, but it does some dangerous things. It does ask us to waive our rights and our claims. It also requires us to dismiss the lawsuits with prejudice. Remember Hopi filed a lawsuit against Flagstaff or Snowball? Okay? It requires us to, to, to withdraw that lawsuit. Okay? All right? So if the Secretary doesn't publish the statement of findings by October 31st, 2022, then it's dead. But remember, people, we're, we're fighting with big corporate America. We're fighting with big government. They've been, been able to, they've been successful in getting water from us, getting coal from us, polluting our, our waters, polluting our skies. They've been able to do that. So we have to do something to, to stop this train from, from rolling over us. So who really benefits? You see the water canal system down there in Phoenix? That's who benefits, okay? Salt River Project, CAP, now generating station, Peabody Coal. Did you know also, remember right now we're battling or, or, or challenging OSM's decision on giving a life of mine permit on Cayenta Mine? It says in here that they get a life of mine permit. The original plan I've already talked about this. It was supposed to be minimum impact on the end. The aquifer. Um, it, it got taken out of the, the uh, discussions because $800 million or somewhere around there was going to be too much, too expensive to, to build. So they took it out. That problem was never in the plan anyway. It was probably not intended in the, in the beginning. 
It was just something like, okay, let's kind of lead them along, and then it will, at some point we'll drop that line. What do we have today? We have an, an aquifer that lies beneath us, the most pristine water that we have from the Ice Age. It, it's our primary source of drinking water. It's been damaged. And that's why you need to talk to Dr. Higgins, wherever he's at. Okay. Our sacred springs have dried up. This is a sacred spring on our reservation. We have ceremonies. We, have, we pay homage to, to all the springs through our ceremonial cycles. Okay, They're affected. Our, our ceremonies have been affected. Our water is contaminated. Once we waive our rights for filing future claims, what are we going to do about the damage to the aquifer? What are we going to do about the springs drying up? What, about, what are we going to do about those, the lack of water affecting our ceremonies? The water supply that's decreasing and the water quality because we can't anymore file for damages to water quality and water right, which means quantity. Okay. And there's no reclamation of the, of the mined area. The Peabody leases require Peabody to, to reclaim those, those areas. And did you know the Peabody coal leases gives Peabody exclusive rights to the subsurface minerals? Did you know that? If they find gold, it's theirs. If they find copper, it's theirs. Except oil and glass, yes. If they, and so it also gives them a right to pump the, the anaquifer. They are, even though we stopped them in 2005 from slurrying that coal from Black Mesa over to uh, the Mojave uh, Generating Station, they are still pumping the aquifer. Did you know that? And then so we have to ask the hard question, why should we settle? How much more wet water will we get from, this, from 2109 as compared to what we had filed in the Superior Court? How much more? Will the settlement satisfy our Aboriginal Federal Reserve rights claims? Will it settle that? Well, obviously, in any kind of lawsuit, when you when you have you're claiming certain things and then you settle, of course, then you say, "I won't raise that anymore. I will be fully compensated. I'll be satisfied. My claim would be satisfied." What the, what is what is the guarantee that this groundwater delivery system will be funded? There are no guarantees. In fact, in fact, it says it's subject to appropriations. It also says that if Congress fails to pr provide funding for this project, we cannot sue them because they won't be held accountable. They won't be held liable. And furthermore, once this delivery system is built, if it's built, and then title is given to the tribe or the villages, there's no money to operate and maintain it. No O&M funding for it. It's up to the tribes, it's up to the villages. But guess what? Some of you villages, our villages, like mine, people don't pay for their water currently, okay? And the group that was going around from, from the council, that they were telling them, you're gonna have to now raise your water rates to, to pay for that. So now they're gonna have to be paying for the water, the water they use. So why should we settle? What is the hurry? And also, what are the weaknesses in our lawsuit? Is that deal better or is 2109 better? That, those are the questions that we have to ask our Hopi water and energy team. Not the attorneys. Remember John Boyden. We don't know our history. We are doomed to repeat it. So what are we gonna do? Attend forums like this, become educated, speak up. Speak your mind. Require the tribal council to, to hold hearings and listen to you. What they've done so far in these three sessions they've had is it's a one-way street. And it's not the, the water and energy team, negotiating team talking. It was the attorneys that are talking. They're not listening to us. So get in, informed. And, and I'm really pleased to hear from, from, from those of you that presented before me that you know about this bill. We have common interests. We have cross-cutting issues with this thing. Learn about it. We have 
authored an action item, which is our way of legislative process, and a resolution to stop this process. To take, have the council and water and energy team to go out to the villages and inform the villages, and more importantly, to listen to the people and then move forward and legislate the, legislate the will of the people. Let your council members know of your concerns. Hold them accountable. Our constitution mandates us to speak on behalf, speak on the welfare of the Hopi people. So we are saying to travel council, the travel chairman, the vice chairman, the water and energy team, you don't have that right to give up and waive our aboriginal our federal, our Spanish law rights to anyone. It's about our sovereignty. It's about our culture. It's about, in, the, in our belief, it's about our covenant with Masao to protect our resources, to protect our ceremonies. It's about economic sovereignty. What the United States has done is they have taken over our, any what we have left of our economic sovereignty, and they have dictated to us who's going to mine our coal, who's going to pump our water, who's going to produce that electricity based from our, from our resources. They've taken that leverage away from us to go out and compete for it and make the best deal for ourselves. That's economic sovereignty. We don't even have that anymore. And this bill is heavily in the interest of the non-Indians. You can see the overall picture. What they want to do is they want to take our wet water, take our coal, put our wet water down to central and southern Arizona, to southern California, to Nevada, at our expense. This is all planned for even back in the 60s. This is just one step to it. One, perhaps one final step to it. Think about, think about the overall picture. Think about who owns the Navajo Generating Station. Okay? The people that own the, including the, the federal government, they own the Navajo Generating Station. They are also the same customers of NGS. Okay? So think about it, think very hard, get educated, and I am really, really pleased to see the young people here. They're learning about it. So with that, I say, Kokwa, bye, Basa, bye, Lulmani. Kokwa, thank you.